We are in Open Campus 099. We are in Module 13, still on understanding the expressions that are radicals or roots. Okay, we are now in Section 15.2. And we got to understand about how you break down a root. So if you look at your class notes, let's look at the first example. Here's just to start us off is to understand what is the value of square root of 25. We've already discussed this, that 25 is a perfect square number. There is a number times itself, which is 25. So when I ask you the square root of 25, you automatically just give me the answer 5. Because we know 5 times 5 is 25. However, now we're going to get to the square root of 24. And if you look at your list, is there a number times itself that makes 24? No, there's not. If you look at your perfect square list, there is nothing on the perfect square list that times itself will make a 24. So we know 24 is not a perfect square. Well, to square root 24, you could go to your calculator. And it would spit out a decimal that goes on forever and ever and ever. That's what the three dots indicate when I wrote that decimal down. And we're not allowed to give decimals that go on forever and ever as an answer. A decimal that goes on forever and ever is called an irrational number. Irrational means it cannot be changed into a whole number of fraction. So, we've got to learn how do you use your brain and not a calculator to get the square root of 24. How do we get that answer? What you're going to learn today is a square root symbol is just like a fraction bar symbol. And what that means is, think back to fractions. If I asked you to the fraction, if I asked you to reduce the fraction 4 eighths, you would have to get that in lowest terms. You couldn't leave me 4 eighths as a fraction, so you would reduce it to 1 half. So we have been trained that every time we see a fraction bar, we learn to reduce a fraction. Well, now i got to train you to do the same thing. Every time you see a square root symbol, you have to reduce the number in the root. And let me show you how to do that. So let's go up to the notes. Okay, guys, I want to reduce the square to 24. The first thing I'm going to say about this is everything we do today is based on your list. Here's your perfect square list. Here's your perfect cube list. If we're reducing the square to 24, we look at the perfect square list. 24 is not on there, which means I don't know the answer in my head. So what I want to do is I want to reduce or I want to factor 24. Now, there's lots of numbers that multiply to 24, so I'm going to list them. The factors of 24 are 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 times 8, 4 and 6. You cannot just go eeny, meeny, miny, mo and pitch which factors you like. You need to find a factor that you're going to be able to square root. So the rule of thumb is when you're reducing or factoring a root, you have to pick a number that's on the list of perfect squares. Well, we all know one is on the list. That would be a good choice. 2 and 12, neither one of these numbers are on the perfect square list, which means neither one of these numbers you could square root. That's useless. 3 and 8 is a bad list because 3 and 8 you cannot, perfect, cannot square root because they're not perfect squares. They're not on the list. Now, 4 and 6 would be a good choice because which number is a perfect square? 4. Okay, the rule of thumb is, how do you decide between these? You want to pick the biggest perfect square that goes into 24. Just like if I asked you to reduce the fraction 4 eighths. If a third grader was reducing the fraction 4 eighths and they said divide by 2, that would work, but would that fraction be in lowest terms? No. So you've been trained to understand to reduce fractions, you pick the greatest number you could divide by, the GCF, the greatest common factor. So we know if we had 4 eighths and we divided by 4, we reduce it to 1 half, and that would be in lowest terms. The same thing is true with radicals, roots. When you're reducing a root, you want to pick the biggest perfect square, and that's what we're going to use. So we're going to rewrite this. 24 is 4 times 6. Now, because that's connected by multiplication, you're square rooting the 4, you're square rooting the 6. This is a perfect square. We know the answer. What number times itself is 4? That's a 2. It comes out. 
Can you square root 6? Is there a number times itself that makes 6? No, there's not. 6 is not on the list. There's nothing in there that divides by 6, so he stays inside. So this is important. Just like in fraction world, I write 4 eighths, you write a half. They may not look the same, but they are equivalent. They're equal in value. In algebra, you write square root of 24, I write 2 times square root of 6. They don't look the same, but they're equal in value. I could check it. This 2 that's out here had a buddy. 2 times 2 is what? 4. The 6 that's inside didn't have a buddy, so he stayed inside. So 4 times 6 is back to 24. The moral of the story is very simple. To reduce a root, you find the biggest perfect square off the list. So now let's go to 48. Square root of 48, is there a number times itself that's 48? No, there's not. It's not on the list. So find me the biggest perfect square that divides into 48. Now the problem is, a lot of you would say, well, 4 divides into 48. Yes, it does, but it's not the biggest. What's the biggest perfect square? 16. So it's 48 is 16 times 3. You always want to pick the biggest number. That way you get this done in one step. So now I'm going to square root 16. I'm going to square root 3. What is the square root of 16? Well, that's 4. How do I know that? That's on the list. What number times itself is 16? Can you square root 3? No, it's not on the list. See, so he stays inside. So when I write square root of 48 and you write 4 square root of 3, we mean the same thing. All right, now we go to here. This is 4 times the square root of 27. Here's where the problem is. You all see the 4 and you go, oh, oh, change it to a 2. Is it in a square root symbol? No, it's not. So we just leave that. It's a whole number. I'm asking you to square root the 27. Is 27 a perfect square? No, it's not. It's not on the list. Don't look at the cube list. We're looking at square list. So we got to figure out what number on this square list will factor into 27. You're right. It's 9. So you write this as 9 times 3. So I'm asking you to square root 9 and square root 3. This 4 that's in the front just comes down. So we leave the 4 alone. What's the square root of 9? Well, I know the answer to that. That is 3. Can I square root 3? Is there a number times itself that makes 3? No, it's not. See, he stays inside. Now, how is this all connected? By multiplication. So 4 times 3 is 12, and then you have a square root 3. So what, I, what was written as 4 square roots of 27 reduces the 12 square roots of 3. You always want what's underneath the root symbol in lowest terms, as small as it can go. Now, you don't only do this with square roots, you can do this with cube roots. But when you do it with cube roots, you've got to pay attention to look at the cube root list. So here I have cube root of 40. Is there a number you can multiply 3 times to make 40? Nope. It's not on the list. So everybody look, I'm looking at the cube root list now. What number on this list will divide into 40? 8. So we're going to rewrite this. The cube root of 40 is really the cube root of 8 times 5. Because 8 divides into 40. So I'm cube rooting both the 8 and I'm cube rooting the 5. Remember to write the indexes of 3 so I know you're cube rooting. What is the cube root of 8? What number do you multiply 3 times to give you 8? Well, we know the answer to that. That's 2. If it's on the list, you know the answer. Can you cube root 5? Is there a number you can multiply 3 times to give you 5? Nope. 5 is not on the list. 5 cannot reduce. See, he stays in the symbol. So what I wrote as cube root of 40 really means 2 times a cube root of 5. Okay, let's try the last one. I have a cube root of a fraction, 2 over 343. Well, we've already discussed this. That cube root belongs both to the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to break this up. This is the cube root of 2. This is the cube root of 343. Okay? Can you cube root 2? I'm looking at the cube root list. 2 is not there. There is no number I can multiply 3 times to give me 2. Can I reduce this? Nope. None of these numbers divide into 2 except 1. And if I, divide by, if I divide 2 by 1, will it change it? No. So we're stuck with this. That is in lowest terms. 
Some roots are in lowest terms. You can't have a cube root 2. It's in lowest terms. Now I'm asking you the cube root of 343. Everybody pay close attention. There's no work here. 343 is on this list. You just give me the answer. What position is this in? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. Because that is a perfect cube, you just write the answer. Okay, so it's very important you understand every time we're dealing with roots, if they're not on this list, we're going to find a number on that list to break them down. Get you in the next section. Thank you.